Hi, I'm Jennifer Gonzalez, author of Teacher's Guide to Tech. You are watching this video because you either just purchased it and you want to learn how to use it, or you would like to get a little bit more of an in-depth look at it. So, let's take a look. So I'm looking at this in Adobe Acrobat, but you might be looking at it in Acrobat Reader or in iBooks or in some other type of PDF reader, but that's this is what it's going to look like here. This book is broken up into five different sections. So I'm going to show you the first page of the table of contents so that you can see along the sidebar of almost every single page, you will see all five of these sections. So let me zoom in. Five sections are table contents, getting started, the tools, the terms, and index. First and last are pretty self-explanatory. Part one is basically a, a bunch of articles and sort of, um, you know, some just general ideas about implementing technology and uh, ways to do it without losing your mind. There's some Q&A stuff on some troubleshooting issues. And so that's just, that's the part that's a little bit more of just, you'd read it through. Part two is really the meat of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. This whole sidebar is clickable throughout the entire book. I'm gonna click on that. And here you're gonna see basically a list of all 30 categories that I've got these tools in. And then within each of these categories, there are individual tools where we take a really close look and show you what it's all about. So I'm going to take a look at discussion tools. Okay, the beginning of each section talks a little bit about what this collection of tools is, what they do, and it also describes some uses that teachers might have for them and uses that students might have for them. And it also lists other tools that are like the ones that I'm featuring. Pretty much for every category, there are just a ton of tools. So I could not cover each one of them. So what I did was I chose sort of representations of each kind of uh, subtype, basically. So for this one, discussion tools, we're going to talk about Skype, Snapchat, Today's Meet, and Voxer. But I also list other ones that are pretty popular that uh, do kind of the same thing that some of these do. Okay, so when you're in that section, then you can just click around. So here's the Skype page, here's the Snapchat page, and you can go flip around in these back and forth. So let's take a look at today's meet. Okay, so for each tool that gets a close-up look, you know, there's a discussion of it, there is a screenshot of it, kind of in action, um, and then there are two, always gonna be two links. One link takes you straight to the website, and this link will take you straight to a video on YouTube that generally will show you the, to, the tool in action. So I'll click on that one just to show you. Okay, so that takes you straight there. And for some of these, I was able to find video tutorials that were made by the company themselves. But for some of the tools, because they're free, I guess they don't have a budget for video. And so they were some of the videos are just made by regular people who are just demonstrating how to use it. But what I was looking for always was something that was relatively short and pretty clear. It's not necessarily teaching you how to use it each time, but it just shows you the features of it. And then you can find other tutorials that'll give you more of a breakdown in, in longer versions. Another feature that you'll notice in these is that some of the terms um, are hyperlinked. And so I'm going to click on back channel. And what that's going to do is going to take us to section three, which is the terms. It's a glossary. That's going to take me to the B page, the A to B page. And you'll see that the word back channel is defined here. And it actually links you right back to today's meet. So let's go over to the terms now. That's, that's part three. It starts with a cover page. It's broken down by all these. We'll go to QS and see. So in between or within each page, you can also link to all the other pages. I can go to the ENF page. I can go to the KNO page. This page is one of my favorite pages in the book, the Google page, because people I hear get confused. Um, they confuse Google terms all the time. So I basically just made a page that's just a breakdown of all how those things are related to each other. The other two parts of the book that I think are extremely useful are the table of contents and the index. Let's take a look at table of contents first. And the reason I think that they're useful is because they're completely clickable. If I want to look at this section called, I want to blank, what do I use? I just click on it, it takes me straight there, and I can read through all of those pages if I want to. If I want to find another section, I just bounce right back to the table of contents again, and I can find something else. Maybe I look here at content curation. Oh, I want to learn about Paperly. So I click on that, I go to Paperly. Want to go back to the table of contents? Go right ahead. So it just makes navigating through very, very quick and easy. 
Uh, if I definitely already know the kind of tool I want, I don't feel like paging through the whole table of contents, I can always just go to the tools, and that's this this page. I use it a lot just as I've been building the book to get around quickly because it's just really easy to get you know, from section to section. The other part that I think is really, really useful is the index, and here's why. Let me go to it. Say you hear a term and you have no idea what the person is talking about, so you wouldn't even know what category it would, you, would, you would even fall into, or you don't even know if it's a tool or if it's just some sort of a term. So say you hear somebody talking about clickers and you don't even know what clickers are. So you can just start in the index and you can click on 153. Okay, I see something about student response systems. I see the word clicker, that's gonna be defined, but I'm not sure I got, I, I saw that there was another number next to clickers too. So let me go ahead and go to the index. Let me click that other thing that says clickers and see if that gives me any more. Oh, okay, there's a definition in the glossary. The index is just a really fast way to uh, learn things. And I also personally find you that you can learn a lot just by browsing the index. Because as you go through here, you're gonna see stuff that to you may not, you've never even heard of. Um, like for example, Black Girls Code. This is an organization that really focuses on uh, teaching young African American girls how to do programming and, and to look at that as a potential career path. So you go to this page, you click on that, you're gonna go right to their website. Or if you browse through the index and maybe, you know, you've kind of always wondered, um, let me get to another page. Maybe you just happen to notice a, a term that just you've never heard of before. What is moon fruit? Let's click on that. Okay, that's in the blogging and website building tool section. It's like these. It's in this list of other tools that are like those. So we can go there, learn what blogging and website building tools are, and then you know what moon fruit is. So it's just uh, my, my thinking was I wanted it to be as fast as possible. I wanted you to be able to get through this quickly without having to worry about internet connection, without having to look for the best source of information. So for example, look at this note taking. Okay, we've got Evernote and OneNote. Evidently these two have been competing hardcore for the last year or so. So what I also tried to find in addition to sort of the basic stuff that I provided for those two tools was I just put a list here of three really good articles that I found that sort of compare the two because in the book I don't go super in depth about any one individual tool but if there's something like this where there's like a battle going on then um, I looked for really good resources so that you don't spend a lot of time having to look that stuff up. One last section you should know about is right here, the resources and credits section. This will become especially useful if you are printing this out and looking for something. If you go here, basically anything, any external link on any page, um, I provided where I actually got it from. So that if you're looking at this in print and you're trying to figure out, you know, oh, she's talking about this video or there's this article, you can actually go, see this is page 32. This is everything that, the external links that I referred to on page 32. So this stuff isn't really entertaining reading, but it may become useful if you're trying to figure out actually what article I was referring to if you're not able to click out of it at the time. And remember, you can also print out the whole thing too. It's just regular eight and a half by 11 inch paper. I would recommend that you put it into an actual binder and even set the sections up with physical dividers because then that will sort of mimic the easy clicking that you can get with the digital version. Also remember that once you've made your first purchase of this binder, you're basically getting it for two years all the way through to the end of 2016. Any updates that I post on there, you'll be able to download them for free. You'll just need to go to Teachers Pay Teachers, click on My TPT, and go to My Purchases. And from there, you can click on Teachers, uh, Teachers Guide to Tech, and you'll be able to download whatever the newest version of that is. For more information, visit www.teachersguidetotech.com. Thanks for watching.